welcome to another episode of The Platform and so cool to feature Paul F. Morphides from Greece. Uh, I first came to know Paul from watching the movie The Power of the Heart. It was made by the, uh, the director of The Secret and uh, he's an Aussie as well and it's such a great film and he did a movie called The Power of the Heart and uh, in that I saw Paul and a great story with his son and uh, here it is. So many uh, people they lose uh, their kids because there is no um, relationship, there is no contact, which is very bad because you know, no time to try again and to try again to find a solution. I have four kids, one of them is playing for Ajax, you know, probably I paid more attention to that and um, the oldest one got a little bit less attention, I don't know, and he was against me in a way and I decided I have to do something, I have to uh, give him an opportunity to get closer. Then all of a sudden I told him, come on, we take the bikes and we go to Greece, you know. I said, in order to persuade him, it might be my last time. Why did you say that? When we go up on the Alps, I will tell you. I had nothing to tell him, I just told him because otherwise he wouldn't come. And I knew that he wouldn't come, you know. We went from Amsterdam to Athens, uh, Greece. You become his brother, you become his mate. You become his friend. This is what happened up in the Alps when it was minus 16 and we we're freezing cold. So we became one. Hey, where are you, man? Dad, where are you? This is the little house here. Come. Hello. Hello. Ah. Hey, look at this. Please, please let us sleep with you tonight. <laughs> if you allow me to sleep here tonight, me and Willem, you know, just for a night. It's so cold. I love you. And then like, everything went away, all this friction, because I was, you know, in the same team with him. And I love that, and I'm very happy that uh, this little mistake of mine, which was uh, not dedicating enough time to my oldest son. I don't know nothing about books, so be careful with your dad, eh? And uh, now that we are really, really good friends. Yeah, so there you go, a super cool guy, and he kind of reminds me of uh, the Roberto Benini character in the movie Life is Beautiful, just so full of energy and great at human interaction and uh, yeah just a super cool guy so it was fun to call him up in Athens uh, he took me on a very very random tour this episode is completely random as you'll see but uh, probably the best views if you ever want to go to Greece you gotta stay at his hotel because the view of the Acropolis and all the uh, area is incredible here he is Paul in Greece here hotel enjoying breakfast uh, hello. hey hello from Australia hello. <laughs> and I'm going to show you the hotel a little bit. In this hotel, we have ancient ruins. People are, eh? this is the hotel. Look a little bit. Wow. So you see the place. It was done uh, before Christ. So the hotel is called BC. Wow. So what about this? What about, what about this guy from Australia? Do you like him? <laughs> yeah? Do you, you like him? Yeah, she fell in love with you immediately. Oh, I got a kiss. That's Isn't amazing. that beautiful? That's incredible. Yeah. So I'm thinking of having the interview on the terrace where you can see um, the Acropolis. Okay. Okay. I'll take you up there now by stairs. I never use elevators, okay? Now when we get out, we'll get crazy. You see the Acropolis, this is, let's say, the highest swimming pool in Greece. Really? That means, yes. It's an infinity pool. You don't see anything around you apart from the Acropolis. Oh, that sounds amazing. So next time, next time you come to Europe, you'll be my honored guest. As a hotel, as you see, and we are coming out. And one, two, three. <gasps> wow, look at that. Holy moly, man, that is amazing. Yeah. That's incredible location. Yeah. That's incredible. Yes, this is Acropolis and this is Athens. 360, you know? Wow. That's stunning. And here we are going to put some. A big, um, uh, what do you call that? A big, uh, uh, um, uh, not binoculars, you call them something different, where you can 
you use that for stars or whatever, something very Te- strong. Like a telescope. Telescope, something like this. And people from here, uh, they are going to study yeah, in details, all these details up in Parthenon. Because up there you cannot use anything. Eh? It yeah. is forbidden. And then uh, uh, down here is going to be a, a heavy telescope or whatever you call that. Yeah. And then they can see. How old is that? What, how old? Yeah. 2,500 years. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. It needs some support. Wait, I take this off, so I put it behind the camera. <laughs> like this? <laughs> that looks good. Like this? You see Acropolis now? Yeah, it's inc- that's incredible, man. Hello, Australia. How are you doing? <laughs> Is that, is that the spot you like? That's a great spot, but to, you need to come close to the camera now to do the interview. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, but where are you going to be? Dur- where are you going to be during the interview? I'm. Not, I don't want to sit. Tell me where, and then I know where. Ah, oh, if you can hear me, you can stand there if you want. That's pretty cool. Yes, because sitting is not my kind of thing. All right, so just turn the volume up so you can hear me. You see the Acropolis behind? Yeah, I can. Is the angle okay? Yeah, it's a good view, yeah. Is it a good view? It's a good view. Are you going to wear that T-shirt on your head? Whatever, because the sun is there. Then I take it. All right. Does it matter to you? No, it's fine, man. Anything goes. We're protecting ourselves from the sun. Well, let's let's you let's get into talk. it then, Paul. Because uh, the show I do in Australia, Listen, I here... can't hear you properly. You have to talk loud. Otherwise, hey, we do that. We do that as, uh, in a natural way. I come here, I listen to you, and then I go back and say, "All right." You hear from here? Yeah. Well, let's yes, let's that's good. let's start the interview then. And it's it's great to have you on the show. And the the show that I do is all about stories. So tell us about your story in Greece. And that, how... that's a nice story, man. You look at that, no? <laughs> hey, listen. First of all. My best regards to all Australian people, you know, to all Greeks that live in Australia. By the way, I've got family there. Uh, something like 60 years back, people left. My uh, father's, let's say, brothers, sisters, they left all to Australia. And I haven't met anybody. They have never come back to Greece. Regards to everybody. I love Australia. I haven't been there. I hope. One day I come and do the tour by bike all around Australia for four or five months. How many kilometers is uh, the tour of Australia? Oh, I don't know 10, how many. Oh, it's a lot. It's a lot. Big country. You, you, you find out and you send me uh, the, the exact days and we'll do that together. All right, man. All right? I'll do a little bit of it. That's a, that, that's a big trip. Well, tell us about your story, Paul. Like, um, I'd love to know how you started your business and, and how did it all start for you? Yes, I started business 30 years back. After traveling around the world, getting to know nine languages, that means talking to people in different countries, we started business making mattresses, natural mattresses. What happened is that I went with a girlfriend I had at that time down to my mother's place at the seaside because I had no money and I wanted to enjoy holidays. And my mother is a Spartan lady, you know, I said, no, 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 you're not married, you get out, you know. What to do? I couldn't sleep in her house, so I went to the seaside. And nature gave me a beautiful, big mattress made out of seaweed, you know. Now the sun is not here. And then we slept on the seaweed mattress. And uh, that was cold. Even it was August, you know, at night it's, get, it's getting cold. So I enjoy the seaweed. And following day I go to my mom again. I say, listen, allow me to sleep on the terrace. I make my mattress myself with the seaweed. And then my mother goes, say, hey, this seaweed is not a good mattress. I've been doing that 40 years. And I'm fed up because it collapses, it's not good, blah, blah, blah. But, and of course, if you only put seaweed, it's not going to be a good mattress. But if you combine that with other material, it's going to be unique. And this is how we started. Wow. So were you the only one? And it's one... a dream. I, I made one mattress, I slept on the terrace, and then another one, and another one. And nowadays, we have 112 shops around the world. Do you see the Acropolis? Behind, by, <laughs> yeah, by I way? can. I can see it. Yeah, it's yes? amazing. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, 2,500 years old, still there. It's so beautiful, no? All our philosophers at the uh, 2,005 years uh, ago, they used to sleep where? On a spring mattress? Do you think so? No. Where? What do you think? 
Seaweed. What else? Cotton. What else? Wool. What else? Linen. What else? Materials that they exist in Greece. So if you then have no money, and I'm very glad nowadays we have no money in Greece because a lot of new entrepreneurs they are going to start because they are going to think twice eh, and do something innovative. Otherwise, you are in the dictatorship of existence. You do things like the rest of people do. So nowadays, like in 89, there was no money. So I had to think of something in order to be different, in order to show and give something in Europe that it, does, it wouldn't exist at that time. Not even now. I mean, nobody can copy you. Because if they don't have the passion to go into the sea and get the seaweed, then no, nobody can copy you. Is that your hotel that you're standing on? Yes, What's yes. Yeah, we are very proud of this hotel because uh, we have used uh, all uh, natural eco materials like wood everywhere outside. I'm going to show you later. It's made out of wood, the facade. Then we have a beautiful swimming pool according to the Greek style at that time. Uh, the color of water, that means what we put, the tails we put in there is different, is unique. And here you have a 360 view. You see Piraeus, the sea. You see Likabet. You see everything. So we are very proud of this hotel. Around 100 rooms. Still working there. You hear now? They are working. <laughs> so anyway, and you are all welcome. And um, when you come, you see what we do. We produce... Uh, very, very good mattresses. I say the best in the world. We produce uh, wooden bikes. We produce pens to write, you know. And these pens are out of bamboo that we get from Sparta. All these natural little things that um, make people, Greek people, very optimistic for the future. So you don't have to have big business to start. Or, eh? You start small and um, accessible. Uh, so the natural raw material is in abundance in Greece. And I hope when you come to Greece, I'm going to show you and your program how we help Greece to get out of crisis. Because crisis is up here, mental. Crisis doesn't exist. Humanity now is doing very well around the globe. And I don't think people are missing anything apart from uh, good uh, humor and uh, being happy. Because food is in abundance. Everything is in abundance. What we need is to sort of treat our souls and hearts to be happy. Μου φορά γραβάτε ιστορίε γιατί τρέπεται να είναι γυμνό, έτσι δεν είναι. Δεν θέλει. Και εννοώ μεταφορικά γυμνό. Στολίζεται δηλαδή. Στολίζεται, Μιλάνε τα σακάκια γι' αυτό, ναι. Μιλάνε τα πάντα. Μπριγιάννα, πάμε. Πώ το λένε αυτό, Βαζελέ και τέτοια. Μπριγιάντίνα. <laughs> <laughs> ναι, ναι, ναι. <laughs> λοιπόν, και κατεβαίνει κάτω, τον περιμένει. Ξέρω μια κουρσάρα μεγάλη και ένα οδηγό και εκείνο και τ' άλλο. Και φεύγει να μέσα στο καυσαέρι και πάει στη δουλειά του στην Αθήνα και business κτλ. Και, mm. και ένα άλλο ξυπνάει και ακούει αυτό. Και ακούει και τα γογόρια. Και εγώ σε ρωτάω. Ορισμό ποιότητα ζωή. Δώστε με. Ποιο δηλαδή, θα βάζει μια ζυγαρία, ποιο ήθελε να είσαι από του δύο. Well, one of the things that I really liked when I saw the Power of the Heart documentary was the first time I saw you, and there's a great story in there with you and your son. And you reminded me of the character in uh, Life is Beautiful, Roberto Benini, just this great sort of view of life that you have and energy. Do you, do you think that's the secret to your success in your business? Like you, you become the product, you're the marketing for the product? You mean that the secret is the family? Of course it's the family, of course are the friends, of course it's uh, trying to be happy. And if you tell me what makes me happy, I would tell you uh, sweating. Literacy, literally and uh, metaphorically. I love sweating and I think that one drop sweat equals with tons of uh, happiness. You know, people that are um, doing a, a job that they move, they, I believe that they are happier than the others. But if you have a job that you don't move, just go out and train, work, you know, in an autonomous way. You don't need anything apart from your mental sort of participation in any effort, in any event, and then you are happy. This is what I do, going around Greece, going around the world by a wooden bike. That's why my dream now is to come to your continent, to Australia, and go around by bike, because the richest person on earth is the one who has seen more. And uh, I... I realized recently, that means 10 years um, uh, ago, I found out that a lot of people are, are traveling. Eh? Airplanes are full, hotels, all this tourism. I think nowadays, because we have everything in abundance, you know, people realize they cannot be forever to enjoy all this, what you see. And then they want to be everywhere. Since you cannot be forever, you want to be everywhere. That's why uh, 
a lot of tourism. A lot of tourists are coming to Greece. A lot of movement around this uh, tourism business, you know. And um, I, I'm happy to be also part of uh, the whole game and to have now five hotels in Athens. And it's very successful. That's why I invite you. I invite all your compatriots there to come and enjoy Greece. Beautiful country. My dear friend George came to Greece. This guy is a billionaire and he's very big, you know. Started talking and then I said, listen, if you want to talk with me, come with me. I took him out in the central of Athens where we have a trampoline. We're not going to talk business unless you follow me on the trampoline, man. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 together. I'm not going on a trampoline. Sure, George. You're a difficult guy to get undressed, man. He came up on the trampoline for the first time in his life and we started jumping together, up and down, up and down. <laughs> 140 kilos, no? Hey, you can become a champion, eh? If you train a little bit, next Olympic Games, okay? I will be your manager, man. <laughs> Wow, what a good boy you are, man. That's the way I like it. Aha. He was so happy. He's like a little child. It, it is hidden. The child is hidden. Everybody is a child, even him, who is a billionaire. Well, yeah, I love asking people about chasing dreams and, and living ultimate dreams. So I imagine you are living a dream. You're doing it every day. But what advice would you give other people out there about chasing dreams? I don't really know sometimes. I mean that. It's not just to talk. I don't know if what I live is a reality or fantasy. Sometimes I am on the edge of a big wave and uh, I think this is reality or this and I don't know and I'm balancing there and I have fun. Today we haven't planned anything. You called me all of a sudden and then I show you the hotel and you say, Paul, now in 10 minutes an interview, please. And this is what we did, no? Am I right? You're 100% so right. Every, yeah. I would say to people, make every day a surprise for yourself. Of course, we plan things. Of course, everybody has got their routine. I don't, but I, I understand when I was younger and my kids were, I have four kids and I had three, but nowadays there's nothing, no routine. So different phases in life. And I'm enjoying now, I'm 61, so I'm enjoying this phase where there is no plan, there is no routine. Whatever comes is beautiful. And today it's you who came from Australia, so far away. Have you been to Australia? No, I haven't. This oh. is the only continent I have ever visited, you know? Wow. And I'm coming. <laughs> yeah, you got to come, man. Nice. Yes, I will, I will. I will. I don't know if, um, I mean, I have other people to come with me, but it doesn't matter. I know it's a big continent, doing that by bike, but I find people there, you know, to, to, to do it together. I want to ask you, like, when, when you first started the mattresses and you first had the idea and you made your first mattress, how long did it take you to turn that into starting stores and selling them all over the world? How long? That was by stage. At the beginning, what we did, we started uh, selling the raw material because we didn't have money to make, you know, mattresses and all this. Selling to mattress makers uh, raw material like seaweed, cocoa fiber, cactus, or whatever we could find in abundance in Greece, cotton, and all this stuff. Then uh, we started making mattresses. And then these people that were making, big companies that were making for them mattresses, they used to dictate to put something like artificial material. And then I said, no, 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 I'm going to follow my own way, and uh, I'm going to make mattresses 100% natural. So we did. And after that, some big companies, let's say, with um, they dictated their policy, how to do that. And they wouldn't care about uh, the quality and the treatment of our babies, the mattress. Then we started our first shop. And the first shop, it became a second. We started the first hotel because somebody, uh, we wanted to show our mattresses and beds to someone from Holland. And uh, we went, I went to a hotel and he said, listen, I'm going to make a room for you free of charge to invite my friends and my customers. Say, no, 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 because uh, I have the, this style, I want, don't want to change. By the way, this guy, 10 years later, he came and he made the whole hotel Kokoma. 
two, two people without money, they always think of an idea. So, okay, yes. the hotel says, I don't have money. And yeah. then I say, come on, I want to sell to you, and you will create money, okay? Yeah. So what we do is we sell to a hotel, but part of it we get back in nights. Yeah. So that's why I invited you both yeah. to enjoy free nights in Greece, yeah. because we barter. Yeah. And if you go back to earlier stages of the economy, you see that yeah. people used to barter. Yeah. Because what is money? Money is the mean to do transactions, okay? The right to do something. Okay, since there is no money or drachmas yeah. or, or euros or whatever, yeah. you give me what you have. What do you have? Your hotel. I give you my mattresses. Yeah. You pay a little bit, of course, yeah. eh? because you buy something. But the rest I buy back in nights. So I have 9,000 nights nowadays. Yeah. And I give to the customers. And you understand? So they don't have any obligation to buy whatsoever, but they can do a test sleep, yeah. like uh, cars used to do. Genius! That's good. And then you get out of this uh, vicious circle that says, yes. I cannot buy because I don't have any money, yeah. you know? Come. And then we started making, uh, we were selling to furniture shops, but I didn't like because one of them didn't pay. We, he gave us a check, and the check wasn't covered. So oh. all of a sudden, I was in big trouble because... Uh, I ha we had no money, so I went to a place where I was walking down there, and I found out that um, this guy was selling white appliances, refrigerators, and all this stuff. Nothing to do with me. I don't know why I entered, and then I started asking him, "What? What is the turnover you do?" He said, "What, what are you talking about? I just uh, leave me alone." And in half an hour, we converted his shop from white appliances to a kokomat, the first shop. <laughs> Because this guy used to sell, say, all these uh, uh, names, brands, but he couldn't make any money because he was sort of delivering. And I said, you do Kokomat and, he, and you are going to be, become a millionaire, a Greek dramas millionaire, millionaire, no? One million, uh, at that time it was um, little money, you know what I mean? Right. And to be honest, he became a Euro millionaire. He made more than, uh, let's say... The first year he made 1.2, yes, 1.2 million euros. Wow! Because we put all products we had at that moment, eh? and I was selling with him, and I promised him that we'd be doing that together, and he made a lot of money. And other people used to come at that moment to see uh, the mattresses, and we started developing this franchise system. That means I remember one uh, uh, shop from Kalamata. A man came in and he was moving like this. He had a lot of pain. And I said, listen, you get this product, the four layer bed. When you come, you sleep on that mattress. And he came back a month later and uh, he paid. And he said, this is the best product ever I had in my life. Of course, this was five times as more expensive as um, he wanted to, he was thinking to buy. And then his um, daughter was there. He was, she was something like 20. And I said, uh, and he said, let's say, buy the same for my daughter. I said, it's not good for your daughter. Your daughter is young. You don't need all this to spend. But what is, the, the, what is are you studying? I asked the daughter. She says, I'm studying to become uh, an accountant. She had beautiful eyes, beautiful face. I said, you are not good to be back office. You be front office. You study Skokoma shop in a small city, you know, here in Greece. And ever since she made it, she, she had no money to, to buy a, a shop and then she bought it and now she built a shop she has got three kids a little hotel i mean this is how all personal sort of contacts eh? and all these people they have a franchise now in greece in europe in the world and now we have a new shop in tokyo and another one in taiwan and i hope soon in canada because there is the only continent that we don't have any presence because probably it's far away so you wow. do something for us you make somebody happy you know but i'm just wondering like Communication is the most important thing in the world, really, like interpersonal communication. And have you? Yes, that's it. Yes, you're right. Have you ever met anyone in your travels that's like you? Yes, you know, more or less. But I am, you know, my. Uh, you're you're quite generous, a, you're quite a you unique know? character. I'm sort of a little bit crazy, you know. I mean, they cannot follow what I do because some people they don't like exactly what I do. But you know, let's say. In about 20 days, I'm going to Croatia. Croatia is 1,300 kilometers from here because I'm going to talk to Dell. Dell is a company with computers. They have 300 managers, a private island to do a conference. And they invited me to be their speaker. So I go there 
and I go, of course, by bike. But people, they don't follow because they, you know, it, it is difficult for, because they are young, they have a job, they blah, blah, blah. And then they say, what do we need to take with us? And I said, nothing. Uh, now, 10 minutes ago, there was a guy down there, I want to come. I said, what am I going to take? I said, nothing. Just take a T-shirt. We wash the T-shirt at night. We wear that all day. <laughs> and all, you know, habits, are, it is our second nature. You cannot get out of your habits. You have to be relaxed and easy to accept whatever it comes. Maybe just to finish off, you can just tell us about the hotel again and then sort of stand to your right and show us the Acropolis and everything. Yes, okay. So at the hotel has got around 100 rooms, beautiful rooms, in uh, styled with coconut. That means um, uh, eco beds, natural beds, non-metal beds, you know, because it's very important when you are sleeping not to have metal around you. I don't have a mobile. But other people they have they better switch that off. So and they must stay in a place without any metal because this metal uh, has got it carries all these magnetic felts that they create themselves. You know the metal around you, and it's not good. So all rooms are metal free. Okay, so you are welcome to enjoy beautiful nights, romantic nights with Acropolis behind you on non-metal beds. Okay, <laughs> so. By the way, you know, Greek is but no, 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 just welcome all Australians and that's it, okay? It's so good to have you on the show, Paul. I'm looking forward to coming over there and meeting you in person and thank you for your time. Thank you and uh, I'll call you later to show the facade of the building. You will love it. All right, man. Ah, there we are. Can you see me now? Yep. You see the bikes, the wooden bikes, people that get up here. And they train. Oh, nice. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, man. They're stunning. We are still working, though. As you see, a lot of dust. But these are the bikes. It's wood and everything. Yeah. You see? We have a swimming pool down here, too. And people, they train here. This is metal, but we are going to get rid of that, too. We are going to make it wooden, too. But the bike is unique, no? You love it? Beautiful Thank bike. You. <laughs> and I'm going to show you the facade of the building. Yeah, okay. The hotel. Yeah. Okay. This is my brother. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Nice. From where? From Australia. Me. Australia? Yeah. Hi. What's the time down there? It is nearly 8 p.m. So right. seven hours difference. And of course, the archaeological site here, which is 2,500 years old, as I told you, you see that now, they are progressing. Yes, 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 they are doing a good job. You never and that's see your future girlfriend, by the way, and she's very excited. <laughs> you see, she's laughing the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's working. You see the hotel? Ah, oh, man, that's stunning. Nice, eh? Very, very exciting. That's so good. Congratulations. Can you show me around the street? I'd love to see one of the streets in Athens. Oh, wow. You see? Yeah, very cool. Very nice, man. That's it. So there it is. Super fun and super random and awesome to have him on the show. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time on the platform.